Hello, it's Aga from Arvis Artist. Today I want to show you how to create the material of the wool. Are you with me? Let's begin! We'll be working today on the wool, but the things you will learn during this tutorial you can use in different materials as well. Ok, so without any further ado, let's start! working on the material straight away. You can see that I have simple grey material on this. As I always remind you, when working on the image, have some references, the goal you're going for. We don't have to have an exact reference, but something similar so we can see the characteristic of the material, its scale, basically everything that can help us make it more realistic. Ok, so let's start from the base parameters. We don't really have any reflections or refractions, so we can leave these values as they are. Now we can start thinking about the diffuse. First of all, you should remember that fabric-like materials have quite specific features. They appear different depending on the angle we look at this. So we can start to imitate this effect in 3ds Max, we need to use the file of map. Let's plug it to the diffuse slot. The rule is that if you look at the parts of the subject at the 90 degree angle, so perpendicular to the view, you will see the first color, in our case black. The second color is used when you look at the subject at the tangent angle. We have different types here, but we'll leave it as it is. We can control this effect additionally here. If you click Bezier and adjust this a bit, we can have the effect less or more intensely. We can set something like this. Now, as we have the base done, we can use some textures. I show you the ones I will use. These are the textures from Polygon. I won't use all of them, but this is what comes with the pack. Ok, so let's drag and drop the diffuse texture to the slot. Ok, so let's drag and drop the diffuse texture to the first slot. I think we can change the scale of the texture a little. As the object is modeled in the Marvelous Designer, it's textured correctly, so we only need to use UVW X form to scale the texture. I want the pattern to be smaller. Let's try 3. No, it will be too small. Something in between. 1.5. You can see that it doesn't change here, so it doesn't matter. Great, looks nice. Now I could use another texture, the brighter one, but I use the same and change the mix value instead. So now, I am mixing the texture with black, making it darker. And I do another one brighter by mixing with white. Awesome! We have the diffuse done. I will unplug it and work on the bump. We need to use Corona Normal and change settings. I will check at Gamma and Flip Green. Ok, we can plug it. Let's see. I close the view. I think it's not strong enough. We can change it here for instance. Let's try 3. Maybe too much. Let's leave 2.
Awesome! Now displacement. I drag and drop the map again. I will unplug the bump as well. Let's plug it to the slot. This effect is too strong. Let's adjust the values. Still too much. You can see that it doesn't look nice in some parts. The value of 3 seems fine. We can combine it with the bump. Great, and now with diffuse. Okay, we can adjust fall off slightly so the bright parts are more visible. Okay, I would like to rotate the texture as it will be nicer in another direction. 90 degrees. Yes, great. Okay, we can leave it as it is. Now I want us to work a little bit on details. Let me show you what I mean. You can see these details here, sort of hers. We can create it by using the modifier. It's called her and fur. Please note that this modifier needs a lot of memory and it can be super slow. So I would advise not to change the values drastically, as it can cause some crashing. Anyway, worth trying. Let me change the viewport a bit to make it easier for you to see what is going on. We have plenty of options here. I'm not going to show you all of them in detail this time, but we will test lots of the parameters. Here we have a general parameters panel where we can set, for instance, the amount of the hairs, density, scale, thickness, and so on. Definitely, the thickness is not in the scale, so we need to adjust it. But first, I would change the material as now it has a totally different color and it looks weird. Go to the material parameters panel. We can start from tip color, which will do light gray. I stopped rendering for a moment as it was a bit laggy. Something around 120 will be good. And now I set the dark grey. Something like this will be fine. We could change different parameters here, but there is no need for this. It will be good enough, I leave rest as default. We can go back to the general parameters panel. Let's start from adjusting the root thick value. Let's try 1mm and start interactive rendering. Okay, it's better but still too thick. Now we can use cut length or scale to make hair shorter. Cut length treats the whole length of the hair as 100% and it cuts it at the length percentage. Here it leaves 50% of the total length. Scale instead, take hairs and scale the whole length. I use scale here. But first, I change different settings so it's easier to see the effect. Let's go to the clamping parameters. Let's change the clamp's value. Let's type much bigger value, 50. We cannot really see changes because strength is equal to 0. Let's use 1. Nice, we can clearly see how it works now. Okay, so the lower the value, less clamps are created. 
pretty straightforward. I set 55 for now. And let's change it to 0 0.5. We can try to change this parameter as well. Now we can work with flyaway settings. Let's set 50%. And now let's adjust the strength. Nice, it creates cool randomization. Let's adjust this value a bit. And let's decrease the strength value. Maybe the value 15. Maybe a bit more, 20. We can try to decrease the strength of the flyaway parameter. Okay, I think that the main issue is the root thick. I'll make it thinner, much better. Let's see the references one more time. Okay, the hairs should be longer. Okay, looks better. We can adjust slightly fly away of strength. Maybe go back to the shorter version. I think we still need to work with the flyaway option. Let's make it stronger. Maybe a bit shorter as well. Okay, something like this will be fine. What do you think? Cool trick, right? It can add a lot of photorealism to the image. I wouldn't use this in each situation, but if you have some fur object in front of the camera, it can be worthwhile. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!